This tutorial will finish off RDX7 log synth by making it polyphonic, creating a neater interface, and allowing us to randomize everything. In the previous tutorial, we built out PMOSC abstraction for modular phase modulation. We made a routing network that allowed us to route any oscillator to any other. We implemented specific routing algorithms based on the 32 built in DX7 algorithms. We made a shit interface for quick testing. As you can hear, we can currently only play one note at a time. We will make our patch polyphonic here. First, let's replace the audio output with an audio outlet. Then we'll add an inlet for controlling things from outside the poly object. We want a route to differentiate between algorithm number changes, feedback levels, individual oscillator messages, and lastly notes coming in. We send the notes, pitch and velocity, onto all of the individual PMOSC modules. Let's save this as a new abstraction. I will call it DX7 Poly, or one word. Now let's create a new patch to test our poly patch. We will cut our no player and interface elements into this new patch. Then we will save it, making sure that it is in the same folder as the new DX7 poly object, as well as the existing IDSR and PMOSC objects. We can use our poly object in a new patch by creating a clone object with an argument that is the name of our saved abstraction. In our case that is DX7 Poly. We also give it a voice number. E.g. 16. We cover polyphony with the clone object in tutorial number 3, so you can have another look at the video if you want to go through the theory of polyphony and the clone object in more detail. We can send this straight to the audio out. We also need to use the poly message to allocate the correct voice numbers for our patch. We do this with the poly object. We cover this method in tutorial number 7 on synthesized strings. This allows us to easily send no on and offs to the correct places. The algorithm and feedback messages need to be sent to all voices though, so we use the word all to achieve this.
Lovely. That is working nicely. So now let's set up an interface to work with the poly object. We are going to do this in a neater, more modular way than we did in tutorial 16. Inside the poly object, connect the to OSCs outlet of the root object directly to the OSC message is sent. This is the way that we will target individual oscillators. Remember to save the patch so that it updates in our main patch. Now we change the messages to line up with our poly object, including the to OSCs message and your message to tell it to go to oscillator one in all voices in the poly. We also change the send name and create a new receive object that goes directly to our clone object. We could then use this format for all our voices and that could be our interface. This is messy and clunky though. Let's do it with a nifty abstraction. We take one of the six oscillators and paste it into a new patch. We will replace the send with an outlet and save the patch as an abstraction, again in the same folder. I'm calling it dx7 underscore oscar underscore interface, although that is a bit wordy. We are going to use a special graph on parent feature. Right click on the blank bit of the patch and select properties. Then check the graph on parent option. You'll see a red rectangle appear. This is the view we will have of our interface from our main patch. You can change the size with the number boxes. I'm going to 150 width and 200 height. We can now arrange the bits we want to see into the red rectangle. I'm also going to add an inlet that will allow us to send messages from outside to set the interface values. We use multiple root objects in almost exactly the same way as we did in the PMOSC modules, distinguishing between ratio level and env, and using the dollar one for looking for the right oscillator number. Make sure none of the sliders are overlapping the red line or they won't be visible. Now we can save again and add this to the main patch. We create an abstraction as normal by typing in the object name. As with the other modules, we use an argument to specify the voice number, in this case 1. We see through into the module in the red square. You probably want to go back into the original patch to go back to the properties window and select hide object, name and arguments. We send the output to our dollar zero to DX7 cent. It would be nice to see the oscillator number visible for each module interface, so we use the dollar one inside the patch to make this appear in a small number box like so.
Great, that's working a treat. We can now easily make six of these, giving each one a different oscillator number. One little change first though, we are going to force our ratio slider to snap to integers. We run the slider through the eye object. We also take any zeros and convert them to 0 0.52. Zero ratio would be silly. Now let's create the rest. We'll add the same scent to each two. Let's test that with some values. That seems to be working smoothly. Probably some default values would be nice, particularly for the envelope, otherwise all the sliders default to zero. Some quick default settings for the level and ratio too. Lovely. We will need to be able to send to these interfaces too. We can use a single received name and send from a single send, because we have the root objects inside looking for their specific oscillator number.
The final thing that we're going to look at is a randomized function that will come up with some random values for all the different sliders and other bits and pieces. There will be a few stages to this. We'll make a sub patch that randomizes a single oscillator, then trigger it six times to each of the different oscillators. Now then, in the randomize oscillator sub patch we've got a trigger coming in the left inlet and the oscillator number coming in the right inlet. First, let's randomize level. We mostly want the level to be 1, except sometimes when it can be something different. So 3 times out of 4, we will get 1 with this setup. And 1 time out of 4 we will get a random number between 0 and 1. We use a pack here to combine the level value with the oscillator number from the right inlet. Then we set up a message so that the oscillator number is combined with the parameter name and value in the right order. The dollar two is replaced by the oscillator number. We can use a similar strategy for randomizing the ratio value. One in four times it will be one. One in four times it will be zero point five. Half the time it will be a random number between one and eight. You can experiment here, though, and do what you like, really. The last thing here is the envelope values. That means four values. One for attack, one for decay, one for sustain, and one for release. My choice is to have the attack mostly very short. Then we can get some nice, crisp and sharp synth sounds. So here we have eight possibilities where most of the time we just have a five millisecond attack, and sometimes it is up to two seconds. For the decay we use a slightly different approach. We generate a random number between zero and one, but then we multiply it by itself three times, cubing it essentially. Then we multiply it by 3000. So we can have up to three second decay, but most of the time it will be quite a low value. The sustain is easier. Let's just do the between 0 and 99. The release we will do a bit like the decay, 
except squaring it instead of cubing it so it tends to be a little bit higher. We put all of this into a big pack, where the last element is the oscillator number. Then we use a message to get it all into shape for the interface abstraction to pass all the numbers along to the relevant sliders. That takes care of the oscillator settings. We can also randomize the algorithm between 1 and 32. That's nice and easy at least. We can also randomize the feedback. It can get quite noisy, so most of the time we're going to set this to zero, and then sometimes randomize it. Now then, we connect those three outlets to the algorithm, the feedback and to the interface and object. Let's give it a try, shall we? Looks like it's doing the job. What does it sound like? Very nice, but we are not going to go into it here. But the downloadable version that we've included in the patch downloads also has a slightly more sophisticated preset system that allows you to save changes. It also bundles this all together into a neater interface. Hopefully this gives you more nice, crispy DX7 like phase modulation synthesizer to play with though. Goodbye for now.